Hello, I'm Grim Riddle and welcome back to Washer Dry's Adventures in Click Clock Wood. I apologise if I sound a bit off throughout this video, I have a bit of a case of the sniffles, my hearing is a bit dulled, and my throat is killing me. But we're powering on, because today's the day we have to record. So let's hop into it and look forward to chicken noodle soup and hours of cartoons while on the couch later on. But perhaps this is all rather thematically suiting, because today we are in the season of autumn. Which you may well take umbrage to and say, but grim, autumn isn't often synonymous with colds, a claim which I vehemently defend myself against, and state, of course it is. It's not like I was just looking for a lazy segue or something. Speaking of which, click clock wood, autumn season. Autumn is something I've always loved while playing video games or watching international media, as well as an Australian, it somewhat transports me to an alien world. You see, much like all of the depictions of Christmas being in a wintry setting with snow, something that we get very sparsely in the country, and certainly none of it in the cities, all of the depictions of autumn are with all of these wonderful leaves. But Australia doesn't exactly have that many deciduous trees. There are of course some, but the vast majority are all evergreens. So when we do get autumn down in the southern hemisphere, it doesn't really look anything like this. In fact, in Australia, it's basically always green, except in summer, when everything becomes a little bit brown, because there's no water and everything is super hot. But let's stop talking about the weather briefly, because, my god, is this heat detection not the worst thing ever? I mean, those things are supposed to be barely even an enemy, and yet here I am spending so much time on them that they might as well be a boss battle. And the worst thing is, I don't even want to destroy a beehive to get more honeycombs for health, both because I don't want to be chased by bees, and also because, having recently been a bee, I would feel a little bit bad about it. And speaking of terrible heat detection, wow, does this not go on for far too long? I felt like I was in some sort of Benny Hill skit here, and I would certainly be playing the music if it were not for the fact that I don't want to get copyright claimed. In the end, I didn't even end up getting the music node, and instead just gave up and moved along. Speaking of moving along, let's move along a lot faster, until we get to the next point of interest. And what out there I ask you is more interesting than stopping inside a shaman's skull. And indeed, it seems poor Mumbo Jumbo has his work cut out for him. The entirety of the floor is covered in false fallen leaves, which makes me a bit sceptical, as after all, Mumbo Jumbo doesn't usually have trees inside his house. He certainly did not in the previous two seasons, which really makes me wonder where all of these leaves have come from. I mean, yes, granted, they can be tracked inside from outside, but this amount of them, well, I really don't see it happening. And of course we see Mumbo Jumbo sweeping, which really forces me to question if maybe he didn't sweep them inside himself. I mean, I'm not really sure what his motivation for doing so would be, but if I were to have to venture a guess, I would probably say, I don't know, magic? But whatever, let's move on, and while we do move on, it's time to once again commit some animal abuse and ground pound this here poor camel once again to once more relieve it of its vital liquids. I don't think environmentalists would be too okay with what I just did, but on the other hand, it was for the benefit of watering a plant, so maybe it would be a wash? I don't know, but I think there would be some sort of imbued prejudice there, considering that after all, our hero is a washer dryer, which is of course a machine, and so therefore is unnatural by nature. I did collect the color coordinated orange Jinjo, but you may well be watching and thinking, but Grim, what about the Jiggy? You've not gotten harvested the Jiggy from your latest crop, and my answer to why I've not done that is rather simple. I, for some reason, thought it might be easy to get from above. After all, it's rather high up, and much like the pyramids of Egypt, it's easier to build the top first and then work your way to the bottom. That is how they did it, right? Well, I'm not sure if that's actually true or not. Someone should probably go and ask Imhotep. Imhotep as in the designer of the step pyramid, not Imhotep as in the villain from the 1999 Brendan Fraser the Mummy. And as we ponder how much more enjoyable Universal's Dark Universe would have been if they had gone with the 1999 Brendan Fraser's The Mummy as the catalyst, which, while not being horror, would have at least made it funny, we enter the Beaver's house in order to plunder it. This action not only gives us our fourth jiggy for the click clock wood, but also allows us to steal a couple more blue eggs and also some music notes, which I must note as I did in the previous video, it seems that this here beaver is yet another one of those twisted creatures we find out throughout Banjo-Kazooie that for some reason thinks it's okay to keep his eggs free standing on a shelf. But let's speed things up once more, because in the name of synergy, it's time to swap one egg shelf keeping beastie for another and visit our good friend Nabnuts. Ah yes, Namnuts, the poor tortured soul who, having chowed down and eaten his entire winter supply of nuts, 
has begged us to help him find some more, and despite knowing that we likely won't be able to give him any due to the tricky issue with characters when playing as a washer dryer, we, rather than simply telling him that we won't be able to help him, instead break into his house and take the final nut that he actually had. Now, some people might say, but Grim, why would you even do that? If you can't give the nuts to nab nuts, you can't even benefit from taking them, so what's the point of doing it? Are you only doing this to make nab nuts suffer? And to answer that question, yes, yes I am, thanks for asking. Now, that's not to say that there's not a benefit from doing so. It's not the motivation, but there is a benefit. You see, after all, Nabnut is a gluttonous fool. He spent all of summer chowing down on his nuts, and because of this, he's going to die in winter. And that's a real shame, but the only way he's going to learn his lesson is if I don't get the nuts for him, allow him to die in winter, and then next summer, maybe he's not going to eat all those nuts. And this may well lead you to ask, but Grim, how in blazes do you expect him to learn a lesson if he's dead? Well, I think the death is probably the lesson in itself. That's where the term kill with kindness comes from. It's kind of me to allow him to die to learn a lesson that will benefit himself. I think in the end, the only thing that would ever really force me to question the morality of what I'm doing to our dear gluttonous soon to be dead friend Nabnuts is whether or not it's wrong to play God. And I do feel that is a fair query to put forward, and I do have to agree, in light of that, it's probably not okay. Anyway, I use my godlike powers to summon the season of winter, and in doing so, simultaneously confirm that my adventure will continue, and that Namnuts will surely perish. However, if it's any consolation, Namnuts won't be alone, as it does seem, our beloved bird friend, Eerie, has, having not been fed in summer due to the exact same character trigger issue with Washer Dryer, is a dead duck. Indeed, surely tragedy has never struck a video game quite so hard as this. It is now clearly confirmed that the Washer Dryer run of Banjo-Kazooie is definitely the darkest timeline in all of the multiverse. It's like that movie The Time Traveler, where the tragedy of Eerie's death is compounded even further by the fact that we have the ability to time travel, but are still unable to save our feathered friend. And you may well be wondering if there's any silver lining and any sort of upside to this horrific loss. Well, I suppose for some there are. I think the caterpillars that we were supposed to be feeding Eerie are probably rather relieved. But with that, we're coming towards the end of this here episode. And so to recap, as we fast forward our way to the exit, not doing anything of note, it does seem we're not going to get the Jiggy from Nabnuts, who is surely going to die a horrific death of starvation, and we're certainly not going to get the one from Eerie, who has already done so. However, all is not lost, and we actually had a lot of success during this episode. We did, of course, after all, manage to get another Jinjo, manage to get another Jiggy, and managed to get a heaping load of music notes. So overall, I would say it's been a pretty successful installment. And so with all of that said and done, as always, thanks for watching, and until next time, I have been and still am Rim Grindle. Tune in next week, and things are going to get a lot cooler, as after all, much like Tony Stark says in the Harry Potter franchise, winter is always approaching. Oh gosh dang it, I totally forgot to get the jiggy from the flower, didn't I?